Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be ranking all of the palettes that I tried in the month of November. So if you want to see what comes out on top as my number one favorite, then just keep watching. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, actually this month wasn't that bad. I'm being dramatic. Last month, last month was bad. If you didn't check out last month, oof, there was like so many ballads and every single one was amazing. This month is average. I have a total of nine places, which is a lot lower than normal, which we're very happy about. So let's start off with number nine, the worst palette that I tried this month. This is an older palette. I did pick it up during the Sephora VIB sale. This is the Urban Decay Naked Cyber Palette. For some reason, I didn't want to listen to anybody. I thought I was going to love this palette, and it's not bad, okay? I am more in love with the packaging than I am with the product that is on the inside. But yeah, it's definitely an underwhelming palette, I would say. It's not bad, though. Like, you can get a quick and dirty look very easily with this, but in terms of doing intricate looks, you really, you really can't get it. The shimmer shades I find to be a little bit on the flaky and sheer side, little bit messy. The shade exploded on me today. I had to like press it back down in. Lackluster shades and the mattes are kind of underwhelming. I think this is more so about just like a very quick monochromatic lighter glittery kind of look. Think Glossier but amped up a little bit. I mean it's a vibe. It's a different vibe than what I'm used to but I wasn't expecting anything more. I looked at this palette and I knew what I was getting from it but I will say quality isn't the best. The shadows just feel a little bit dry to me. So it's not bad. I can get pretty looks with it, but it's also not that good. I don't recommend it. Don't you dare pay full price for this palette. 50% off only. Let's move on to number eight. This is a palette from ColourPop. I wasn't sure whether or not to put this in this video because you can't buy it individually. This is the ColourPop On A Wing Pressed Eyeshadow Palette. So there's five shades. Now this comes from one of the holiday sets on the ColourPop website, the If You Like set and it comes with five different quints and this set overall is awesome has some beautiful color stories but this is the only palette that I've tried thus far and I really really like it so everything else in this video is actually pretty good it's just there was a lot better shadows that I tried this month I think the color story is absolutely beautiful I've only used this for one look so far so I played with the shimmers I haven't put them on my eyelids yet I really only use the mattes uh, but the shimmer Shimmers are like average ColourPop shimmers. They're not oomph, shiny, sparkly, but they get the job done for a nice purple look. It's a solid palette. You can't buy it individually. I do think the set makes a great gift. Quality is nice, solid. Let's move on to number eight. We do have another ColourPop palette, and I love, I really, really uh, let me restart that. I really, really like this palette, and I feel like almost eighth place isn't right but I'm looking and it doesn't beat out any of the other palettes. So I guess it does fall in eighth, but like I really, really like it. So anyways, this is the ColourPop and Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer palette. I don't know if I like the color story or the theme that I love. I think that this is a fabulous gift for Christmas. I would love to receive this personally. It is so cute. And I'm not gonna lie, the color story inside is not bad. It's like a perfect Christmas color story. It's neutral, but you still have colors to play with. The mattes are very easy to blend. The shimmers were decent. Like I say, shimmers aren't ColourPop's strength in these pressed powder palettes. Obviously, their Super Shocks are great with the shimmers, but their pressed powder palette shimmers are a little bit just average. Nothing great, but not bad. It is the same here, but I do really like this color story. The quality is super duper nice. I did a full review on this entire collection. It's my favorite collection that ColourPop has come out with in a really, really long time. Yeah, I love this palette. I definitely recommend it. Is the quality going to knock your socks off? No, but I think it's a unique... I, I don't want to say it's a unique color story because it very clearly is not, but I think it's laid out very great for a Christmas palette. I like it. Okay, let's move on to number seven. This is another palette that I picked up during the Sephora VIB sale. It's so good. So <laughs> this is the Dior Backstage palette in the shade Plum Neutralist. Now the swatches that I'm going to show you, don't go by the swatches. These do not swatch good at all. They look dry, but this has a sophistication on the eyelid that is absolutely 
absolutely beautiful. Even the shades that look lackluster in this swatch, they blend out really smooth and subtle on the eyelid. So you know I'm a purple lover and of course I got this because there's two plums in here but it's only like two. Like if you want a purple look, you stick in this quad but I do like you how you have these neutrals. You're not going to get a pigment packed look with this palette. If you like a lot of pigment, don't do this, but if you like that luxury, softer, more sophisticated look, this is beautiful. There's no skipping in this shade. Yeah, this is an acquired taste for sure, I would say. I don't think everybody's going to love it, but I personally really liked it, and I loved the glow that it gave my eyelid. Something very Tom Ford and Charlotte Tilbury-esque about it. Moving on to five? Was this six? This was seven? Anyways, this is number five. I'm counting these all as one palette because there are four quads. And that's going to be the Vizzy Art Holiday Collections that they came out with of the Petit Fours. Oh my gosh, I love this collection. How cute is the packaging on these? I did a review and a look with each quad. I like some more than the others, but generally speaking, we're gonna pair these together. These are really, really nice. I don't think the color stories in any of these are anything crazy and that you don't have, which is why this is ranking not at number one, let's say. But the quality is really, really solid in all of these. If I had to give you a recommendation, I think Bullion is my favorite. This is such a good holiday, New Year's Eve little quad to have. I also have worn Peridot a few times, which is this really pretty green. This is a little bit more subdued than personally I would prefer, but it just gives a solid everyday green look. I had a lot of fun with Lapis, which it's a blue, so I'm not going to reach for it too often, but this is my third favorite. But quality in here, really, really smooth, thick, creamy shades. And then my least favorite is Garnet, just because I don't, I'm not drawn to this color story, but quality on these is absolutely fabulous. They're solid color stories, but they're also not very unique. But in terms of just having one look really accessible in a quad, these are great. So if you see any that you like, you know, they're not too expensive. Viseart is such a reliable, good brand. So yeah. Moving on to number four. This was an exciting palette to try out this month. This is from Melt Cosmetics. This is the Amour Mariposas collection. I mean, the artwork on here, it's sick. It's awesome. I love it. It's a heavy palette. I love this style and layout that Melt came out with because they've never come out with a big palette like this. I think Melt has had a reputation of being inconsistent in the past. The quality on this, super duper good. It's not my color story though, that's why it's kind of more towards the middle and not towards the top. I just don't love these colors, but I can speak for the quality in that it's awesome. And it did actually force me to step outside my comfort zone and create a really fun, colorful, deep look. I mean, this is a grungy palette as most melt palettes are. So if this is a palette that you're eyeing and you were thinking about picking up if it's within your budget, I do recommend this. Just think about if you're going to use the color story a lot because I can speak for myself in that I probably wouldn't, but I do approve of the quality. <laughs> Okay, moving on to number three. I forgot about this palette in like the last two weeks for some reason. I think my head has been so into Vlogmas, but <coughs> Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette. I have it in the light shade. I really love this. It's a boring color story. It wasn't something that I was excited for, but then I got it and I loved it. I do have one, one thing to say, an update. The shadows are great, the highlights great, but for some reason my cream blush, it's dry already, which is very odd because I have a number of cream products from Natasha Denona and they don't dry out like this, and uh, this fast, it's crazy. I'm gonna show you, if you see up close, like, like nothing's happening. You this is just so dry. I have to press it really hard to warm it up. It does not feel like the way that it felt when I got it. You can see I barely have any pigment. So this was probably going to rank higher, but I'm really disappointed that this happened with the blush. I mean, I've been storing it with, you know, the layer, layer clothes and this. So I did want to update you guys on that. I put this in my monthly favorites and for some reason I didn't notice, but when I was doing my swatches for this video, I was like, hold up, is this dry already? That's kind of ridiculous for the amount that you pay. But let's put the blush aside. <laughs> the powders are really great. These shimmer shades are extra glimmery to kind of make up for the boring color story. So I still really like this palette, but just note that cheek thing, but 
if you like neutral colors, I do like the color story of this. Okay, let's move on to numero dos, number two. This came out of left field, you guys. I did not know that this was going to rank this high. It is not a new palette. Oh, but I used it probably the most out of every palette this month. And that is the Melt Cosmetics Brunette Palette. I picked this up a few months ago, put it to the side, kind of forgot about it, wasn't that excited about it because it's kind of a boring palette, used it, Fell in love. Can not stop using it. So as you can see, even the packaging looks boring. And look at the inside. Quite boring as well. Lots of matte, boring shimmers. We have every single color like this in our collection most likely. But I just keep grabbing for it. The mattes in here are phenomenal. Lots of pigment but still very easy to blend. I wish there was a shade just a little bit darker than this one I would say. Something a little bit closer to black but not quite black would have been awesome because these two shades especially are kind of close to one another but I mean that's me being super picky here. And these two shimmers are nice and smooth. I will say when we get to bourbon and stout right here you do have to dig a little bit to get some payoff but once you, you can see it's like once you get it and pop it on the lid, absolutely beautiful. So they don't feel the greatest, but they do look really nice on the eyelid. So it's very basic palette, but I wore this a few times this month on two occasions. So I actually wore this palette on Thanksgiving. This got to be the Thanksgiving palette. I wore an all matte look for Thanksgiving. It wasn't that exciting, but this made the experience so great because the colors were so blendable. And then I had a birthday party that I went to. I played a little bit more with like this shade. So my lid was like very sparkly and pretty. So I've really been liking this palette. It's kind of just like an essential palette to me. It didn't overly excite me but the quality was just there and it was colors that I was so comfortable with that I kept grabbing for it so don't sleep on this this is a really good one from Mel okay the last the number one palette winner of this month is the first palette that I tried this month on November 1st the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette <laughs> I love this. I mean, is it my favorite palette that Huda has? Probably not, but it's like my gonna be my most used. I, like that's how I feel about Pat McGrath Divine Rose too. It's not my favorite palette that Pat has, but I reach for it all the time. This is gonna be that situation. Definitely wins the award for best packaging though, no? Uh, but these color stories are right up your girl's alley. I'm wearing this palette on my eyelid right now. Kept it really basic, more in the pinky tones for this. I just let the eyeliner do the talking, but yeah. Everyday pretty pinky, oops, <laughs> everyday pretty pinky mauve looks. There's some sparkle shades for some different texture. Nobody else lays out a palette better than Huda Beauty. I wish she didn't come out with a pinky palette because like 80% of her collection are pinky shades. But if she was going to come out with a pinky palette, I'm happy it was this one because it's just beautiful. The quality in this is great. I don't regret it at all. I don't think if you have Mercury Retrograde and New Look that you need this. No, not New Look. New Nudes and Mercury Retrograde. If you have those two, you probably don't need this one. But I don't regret this one at all. It's just a color story that I love. So I'm very happy to have this in my collection. This palette inspires me. I look at it. I love it. It gives me it gives me that feeling so this has to be number one it's just the prettiest and it has great quality and if you've made it to the end congratulations you get to be a part of my giveaway now I don't know if I've announced this yet or not but I'm just going to re-announce it I'm just gonna do random Christmas giveaways for or holiday giveaways for the month of December randomly some videos will have it some won't I hate announcing giveaways I just don't like it so I think this is the best way to narrow down the people that get to enter, the people who watch me. So congratulations, if you've watched a video to the end that has a giveaway. So what I'm going to be giving away is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette, along with some other extra goodies that I'm gonna throw in, but this is going to be the grand prize. Now, if you do want to enter the giveaway, this is open internationally. The giveaway is gonna close exactly one week from the posting date of this and the rules basically I will have them in the description box so make sure you check that out before you enter because I might forget something right now but all you have to do one you have to be subscribed to me and you must be following me on Instagram Morgan Turner makeup I want you to comment down below holiday tradition that you and your family have and if you don't have one 
I don't know, just write something nice. I don't really <laughs> care. And then in your comment, make sure you give me your Instagram handle because that is the way that I am going to contact you. Now, if you don't have an Instagram, just let me know and give me an email. That's fine. But if you do have an Instagram, make sure you're following me and give me that Instagram handle so I can contact you. And yeah, any other specific details will be in the description box. So make sure you check that out. I'm really excited to give one of you this palette because it's really, really that good. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. Join us every day this month. You never know when another giveaway is going to be here. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.